Merry Christmas and welcome to part 6 of Mega Man X8. In this episode, we're going to be going after Avalanche Yeti because to hell with Gravity Antonian stage. I'm not saying the stage itself is annoying, but the mid-boss, that's a different story. Now, wait, I just said I'm not going to that stage. Thank you. Now, Avalanche Yeti, seeing as how we've already beaten our fourth Maverick from here on in, all the Mavericks will be talking about their allegiance to Sigma. Something that is, well, at least a good attention to detail, unlike X7, where you already know it's Sigma, it slowly but surely shows it's Sigma, but unfortunately, Sigma is not mentioned by the Maverick Hunters. And I need some of that pause. Meanwhile, Here we go. I'm just trying to beat Avalanche Yeti stage, not get all the secrets. In order to get the secrets, you're gonna need zero for this. Avalanche Yeti. And to be quite honest, that is something that can be annoying, because this stage is a jet bike stage, ironically on snow. Hey, it's December, it's Christmas time, it makes sense, right? But what makes it annoying is the fact that you're going to have to go through the whole entire stage just to get to the end point to use Zero to get the um, items that are here. And only Zero can get them because he has a double jump and the double jump height to get it. And on top of the fact that you will need um, Optic Sunflower's weapon just to actually get to the Dr. Light Capsule. But yeah, you might want to take your time with this speeder bite section because unlike the speeder bite section in the Mortal Man of War stage, even though Axel X and Zero has their own power-ups, X having his Charge Buster, Zero having his, um, Slashes and Axel having his, um, Axel bullets that are rapid fire, it can still be a little bit tedious with the boss coming oh, with the mid boss coming up. And also, you gotta be careful of scooter bikes sneaking up from behind, trying to ram you from behind. I mean, your best bet is to dodge out of their way when they stop so they can hit other enemies and make your job easier. Although I like the soundtrack of Mega Man X8, don't get me wrong, the soundtrack of X8 is fantastic. Some of the enemies that the soundtrack is used on is rather quite annoying, this one being one of them. You're gonna need Axel to dash into the cruise ship. And uh, once Axel dashes into the cruise ship, He's going to uh, do some damage to said ship. X and Zero, they can just simply sit back and fire and not have to worry about getting in close just to hurt this thing. And the only reason why I have Axel is because of his rapid fire um, Axel bullet. Otherwise, I wouldn't even use Axel for the stage, specifically for the sequence. And let's not forget, folks, I also beat Gigavolt Mana War in Part 2, so I have Avalanche Yeti's weakness. So that's another reason why I got to the stage. Just a few shots with X and a few charge shots with X. This monstrosity will go down for now. I say for now because it's going to come back later on the stage and alienate us some more. This boss can be rather annoying. Especially since you're going on a high speed um, speeder bike section and enemies will be dropped right in front of you faster than you can respond. Or they can spawn in front of you faster than, they, than you can respond. The whole point is you're trying to avoid taking contact damage, which unfortunately is not actually working. I am failing miserably at that. And I made the mistake of using both of my uh, life bottles. I don't have the full life bottle up yet. 
unfortunately, that's in the stage too. Oh yeah, by the way, sorry for the graphic the graphical frame rate drop there. I don't know what happened there. But I'm just going to try to get through this stage without actually dying, hopefully. So we just need to watch ourselves and watch out for these um, trip wires that these, these little surfbot bastards constantly put on the ground. And if I just maintain my course and not fall off the cliff or run into a wall. Oh. Well, that was stupid. I can't believe I did this. At least there's a checkpoint after the first time you beat the Mega Carrier. At least it doesn't start you all over from the beginning like Gigabolt Mana War, where facing Gigabolt Mana War and shooting him down is the whole entire stage. I do have to say though, there are certain points in the stage where you can gather a lot of rare metal. I mean, not rare metal, but uh, a lot of high quality metals. Where the metals will just give you lots and lots of uh, metals to work with. I mean, the enemies will drop lots and lots of metals so that you'll be able to um, craft some more powerful I mean, items and weapons for X, Axel, and Zero. Even though, near the end of this game, I'm not really gonna use Axel again. I mean, I may use him for to get some of the weapon upgrades for X, but that's it. Because I kind of don't have a choice. Some of the weapon upgrades are lost. And sorry for that frame rate drop, folks. I don't know what happened there, but that frame rate drop just was atrocious. But I took myself a shortcut that pretty much led me straight to the second round with this mid boss. And let me assure you, this is the last part of the stage that will lead me straight to Avalanche Yeti. I'm not kidding, all we have to do is just beat this thing. Yeah, you'll have to watch out for, um, these, uh, you have to watch out for the mines that are there, and also watch out for the fact that the ship itself will try to dash in front of you. You can use X's charge shot to lay in some really powerful hits to try to end this quickly. Yeah, I may die a couple of times. I mean, actually, I died about four times to this boss. And it's rather annoying that I did. So, try to destroy the, uh, those little bastards that's trying to drop bombs in your way, and they'll drop, um, health for you sometimes. And also there's a metal that, oh, I died. But as I was about to say, there was a metal that would actually allow you to have more health come to your way, unfortunately. That will be into a later stage. There's also a medal that will give you a discount on medals, and I do believe there is a medal that will, um, I'm trying to think of it. Oh, yes, there is a medal that will allow you to attract more medals. Like, enemies will drop more medals, and you can just grind on them, no problem. All of this could be helpful. The only reason why I'm mentioning those medals is because of the fact that. It would make the game a hell of a lot easier if you had those medals and buy them. Because after all, this game has a new game plus. And unfortunately, me beating it on normal is not going to get the true ending. Meaning I'm going to have to actually try to gun for the uh, true ending off screen. Because you're probably already going to see leading up to, like, the final battle with you-know-who. Because Sigma is, of course, the final villain of the game. Anyway, I'm actually doing a lot better since I'm going off topic. We're taking on the same thing we just got for taking on not too long ago. Just try to dodge to avoid the missiles, and if you happen to destroy the compartments that the missiles are in, 
just opened fire on the thing. And that's it. With that said, we can now go to Avalanche Yeti, no problem. And of course, the speeder bike runs into the ice wall. It's here that is the problem. Because you're gonna need... Um, you're gonna need X. No, not X. You're gonna need, um, Zero, sorry. I don't know if X could actually get up there, but you're going to need Zero. Because Zero is the only one that can make that Good double luck. jump I'll over... Care of it. Well, X could actually make the double Roger. jump with the Nova Strike, but Zero is the only one that can make the double jump up. Unless X has the Icarus Armor. Warning. Oh, by the way, Warning. this whole entire field? Avalanche Yeti. So now it's time for us to take care of this guy who will be burying under snow throughout the entirety of the fight. How annoying, really. You must not stand in the way of our, my master's ideal. Avalanche Yeti, what is Sigma trying to do? My master no longer considers your world to be ideal. We intend to fix things. It's too late, X. You and your puny maverick hunters have lost. Alright, Avalanche Yeti, who so totally don't look like Frostman from Mega Man 8. He is practically gonna jump to and from. He will shoot the Drift Diamond at you. And on top of that, he will use his body to do damage. The Drift Diamond don't hurt. It's running into Avalanche Yeti is the problem. And he also tries to run into you like, um, Blizzard Buffalo. Just make sure you use the Thunder Dancer, which is a very, very erratic move. To shoot him in the back with it when he jumps like that. Oh, and be careful, once he's in his, um, uh, in his desperation maneuver, he'll drop snowflakes. One of those snowflakes touch you, you'll be frozen, and Avalanche Yeti will run into you dealing more damage. But seeing as how I stopped that nonsense from happening, at that point you use a double team, by the way. <laughs> Mega Man X and Axel home. has completed Avalanche Yeti stage. So, with that said, we've got the Drift Diamond for X, Ice Gatling for X, and Hyo Rashu, no, Hyo Ryushu for Zero. Hyo Ryushu will allow Zero to uh, jump higher and freeze enemies with his um, sword. X's Drift Diamond yeah, if charged like will drop fight. the snow very snowflakes that Avalanche Yeti was going to drop on me. Axel's Ice Gatling it's pretty damn good. Although it's not as good as the ray gun, but it's still pretty good. Sigma. I've suspected as much ever since Vile showed up. Whoever's behind it, they were most certainly after Lumine and the Orbital Elevator. There are some dark forces at work behind the scenes here. I'll continue my analysis. I hope you uncover something. By the way, I noticed a Reploid copying Sigma's body back at the orbital elevator. Could that be connected in some way to them going Maverick? I doubt it. Theoretically, there's no danger in copying others' bodies. X, you fought Sigma bodies before, so you know how tough their design is. I suppose all I can do now is continue taking care of the Mavericks and collecting data. And with that said, I hope you're keeping up with the story. Long story short, Sigma has done what he tried to do in X7, which was make a whole army of Axles, basically what's going on here. But we will continue X8 in part seven when we go to Burn Rooster, who happens to be the weak who happens to be weak to, well, Avalanche Jetty's weapon. This is RFMan985. See you guys next time.